Hello and welcome to a new edition of Bengal Magazine. My name is Jeff Ventura. In this week for Tom Kohler, on today's show we're going to talk men's soccer with head coach Mark Howlett. He's bringing along junior defender Matthew Wong. In our second segment we'll talk women's volleyball with head coach Maria DePeters and junior outside hitter Samantha Parenti. In our final segment we'll stick with volleyball with Kelsey Bayshore, uh, but kind of talk about what she's doing off the court that is making her stand out. When we come back we'll be talking men's soccer. Stick with us. Welcome back. In our first segment today, we're talking men's soccer. We're joined by the always dapper head men's soccer coach, Mark Howlett, and junior defender from Coventry, England, Matthew Wong. Um, Mark, the season at this point, we've tripled our win total from last year, just past the halfway point. Um, not quite where you want to be, but we've seen a lot of good things so far in the first half. Um, just kind of assess where we've come so far. Um, I think we knew that it wasn't going to be easy and we knew that we were going to have some dips and we were going to have some successes. The nicest thing for me is that the product and how we're wanting to play is being shown and uh, you know it's mental breakdowns and, and a lack of a little bit of discipline uh, mentally that, that's causing us to dip right now. Um, I'm not upset. I think that we're on a good path. We're building a good foundation. People are doing the right things and it'll come together. What are some of the, some of the strengths, some of the, the positive things that you've seen? I think, you know, the, the new guys that we have on board uh, mixed with the returners, some positives are that we have some very good soccer players and we have some guys that want to possess the ball and want to keep the ball and we're trying to play attractive soccer. And uh, that's a huge positive in where we want to go and how we want to go about doing things. Um, also, the attitudes to this point have been very good. And, you know, again, the understanding is that it wasn't going to be easy and we just need to continue working hard day after day and that's happening. I, I do want to come back to that attractive soccer statement in a minute, but you talk about one of the new guys sitting next to you. He's not new to you, though, and we'll get to that as well. Uh, Matthew, new to Buffalo State this yeah. year. Um, want to back up a little bit. I, in, in the intro, I said from Coventry, England, and our viewers will pick that up pretty quickly when you start answering here. Yeah. Um, How did you come to the United States to play soccer? Um, I originally got recruited by Coach Howlett um, to Canton and then um, decided that, you know, when he made the move to Buffalo State that, you know, I thought it would be a great experience and a great chance to uh, come to such a great institution. So I um, decided to come here and I've transferred here as a junior. So you came overseas to Canton directly? Yeah, yeah. And was that always in, in the cards? Did you aspire um, to play collegiately in the United yeah, States? I did, or? I did want to carry on playing uh, soccer because in England there's not um, fantastic opportunities at university to carry on playing a sport. So I thought, yeah, you know, I like to travel as well, so I thought it'd be a fantastic experience, um, a life-changing one to you know, move abroad and study, carry on studying while being able to play a sport. So. And you talked about playing at Canton and coming here. Yeah. You came with a couple of teammates, which yeah. is kind of a, yeah. a unique opportunity. Usually when a student athlete decides to transfer, they're going to start all over and yeah. a fresh start. You have, you've kind of had a little bit of support coming with you in addition to coach. Talk about the transition to Buffalo State and, and Hopefully yeah. what you've enjoyed about being yeah, here. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it, yeah. You've got a great uh, set of guys on the team. You know, we've got a really, you know, team team, and, you know, we've really um, come together in the last few weeks. And I think, you know, the guys I came with, um, we've really enjoyed the experience. And, you know, I think we'll get better as the season goes on. Mark, talk about the process a little bit. You know, you're hired at Buffalo State and, and you know the cupboards aren't bare, but you're going to need to fill out a roster, um, and, and this is one of the guys that, that you brought with you. What was attractive about, about bringing Matthew to this team? And I think uh, the biggest thing about bringing them with me, it wasn't you know, set in stone. They obviously had to make the choice to, to want to come with me and, and liked what has happened in the past, but I think having them come with me was pleasing to me because it means that they enjoyed their experience playing for me and within our environment and that we were doing things right but I also know with the the guys that came with me they're going to play for me and I think 
that as a coach is huge, that you know guys are going to step up when chips are down. They're going to be the guys that you're going to look to to really bring things together. You got a chance to embarrass him a little bit. What, is, what does he bring to the team as a defender? Um, I, I think he brings a toughness. He brings a, a level head and an organization that he, he communicates. He, he demands things from people in the right way. Uh, and then again, you know, I know that in the troubled times, he's going to step up. And he's going to make sure that he's playing for his self-pride, the team's pride. He's playing for our program. Earlier, you mentioned this notion of an attractive style of soccer. And, and you know, those who have been around the SUNYAC long enough know it's, it's a very physical brand of soccer mm-hmm. being, being played by some of the top teams as well. Um, how do you want to play the game and, and what is the best way maybe to, for us to pick up more wins within the conference? For sure. I think there has to be a good balance and we have to have those guys that are willing to just dig deep and be disciplined defensively, be hard 1v1 defenders and that have a desire, a real desire to win the ball. You have to mix that then with guys that have creativity, that have the experience on the ball, that can use it very well and possess the ball. I think our style you know, has to change just a little bit. Instead of being a patient team, we have to hit um, good areas quicker so we can advance quicker. But still, once we hit those areas, then we're still able to possess a ball and be dangerous in the final third. Matthew, talk about the style of play and how it relates to your game. We're not a running kick team. We, we want to play the game. And, yeah. and how do you enjoy that style of soccer yeah. or, or, or not? I really, I, I, I do enjoy keeping the ball. You know, it's. Um, I think that's the best way to play the game. You know, um, ever since I've been with Coach Howell, he's always had an emphasis on trying to keep the ball and you know attain possession. So it's been yeah. Coming to Buffalo State, it's the Cineacs are tough, tough division. So it's it's very physical. But I think you know um, we'll be able. We're trying to do our best to keep it, and you know. I think we have improved and showed that we can keep the ball at times, and we've done very well. Eight regular season games remaining, six of them at home, so that, that should be a positive. And, sure. and two big home games this weekend, uh, Swigo on Friday, Cortland on Saturday, both mm-hmm. SUNYAC contests. What are you looking for in the second half of the season? Um, we, we sat down this week and created new goals, mid-season goals, where each game we're going to look at those goals. Um, and it's everything from you know, shots on goal to goals conceded to goals for. And we're going to make sure that there's a commitment and a real emphasis on achieving those goals or or many of them in each contest. If we do that, you know, we pick up wins. Uh, The season is still, like you said, we're only halfway through it. I think we can still build, we can still pick up wins and we can still fight to try and climb up the Suniac table. Just about a minute left, and I do want to talk about a partnership that you've kind of started this year with the Westside International Soccer Program. Um, two players a week, or two players every uh, twice a week going down and, and working with this organization. Talk about what the organization is and, and why you've been involved in it. Uh, it's a not-for-profit organization that has done an unbelievable job with the refugees in the area, um, getting them to soccer practices. and. Uh, these guys go and pick them up door to door, bring them to Front Park and allow them to be a part of something that they love to do. Uh, These kids are from all walks of life, from all backgrounds. Some don't have shoes to play in, some do have cleats, some have the right equipment, some don't. And I think it's important to get out in the community of where we're living and for these guys to also see that there's not just one way of, of being brought up and one way to live. It's a, it's a great opportunity. and It's great that you've gotten them involved to give them some perspective of, of what else is out there, a great learning experience. Sure. So, but, well, guys, good luck, especially this weekend. Uh, Friday again at home at Coyer Field, 4 o'clock against Oswego. Before the break, I do want to point out our Tim Hortons Buffalo State Athlete of the Week. This week, it's women's volleyball player Samantha Parenti. Junior outside hitter racked up 58 kills with a 424 hitting percentage. She helped Buffalo State to a four win week. Elementary education major, she pounded out 20 kills in a three set win over Ithaca, and then 15 kills with no errors in a four set victory over Nazareth, where she was named the tournament MVP. Samantha Parenti is your Tim Hortons Buffalo State Athlete of the Week.
In our next segment, we're joined by a couple of Americans, women's volleyball coach Maria <laughs> DePeters and junior outside hitter Samantha Parenti. Welcome to the show, and we've got a lot to talk about here. 26-8 um, and eight last season, trip to the SUNYAC championship match, and then coming, coming into this season with high expectations, 5-6 uh, and six through the first 11 matches, kind of feeling our way, and then a light goes off, and we've won 10 in a row, one shy of, of a school record. Um, how has the season gone so far, and, and maybe what changed after those first 11 matches? Yeah, we stacked our first half of the season with probably the hardest competition that we were going to see until the very end. So those losses were losses against really, really good teams. I mean, the first weekend we played two teams that were in the top 25 and one that had votes. So we had a really great end of the season, but, you know, if – you got to come in even better than you ended the season before. And I, it, even with one person that's different on the court, and that's pretty much all we had, it still changes the whole atmosphere of the team. So the girls had to find out how do we replay with each other again. And that's okay because those losses were learning experiences that I think helped to get us the wins that we have now. And, of course, 15-6 and six overall, but the most important part of that, 3-0 and o to start SUNYAC play. Uh, so to this point, haven't lost a SUNYAC match in two years. Talk about how last weekend, or the last SUNYAC weekend went. Went awesome. I mean, the girls knew what they had to do. We watched film, we put out you know, game notes to each of the girls. We practice against how we're going to beat the teams, and they had the right mindset going in. I mean, the sets that we dropped, we dropped because we maybe took a step back. We are like, okay, maybe we got a little bit too confident, and then we realized, okay, we can't get confident. We have to play overly confident we have to play hard and compete for every single match of the point and that or every single match of the game and that's what we preach every day competing and that's what they did compete sitting next to you samantha parenti uh first team all suniac last season this week you were the suniac player of the week in addition to our athlete of the week uh you lead the conference with 238 kills right now talk about where you are in your season so far is it what you've expected or are you exceeding your expectations I think it's what we expected. Um, we're really working hard. Everyone's coming together as a family, necessarily not only as teammates. Um, we hang out on and off the court all the time, and I think that has a big role in why we're doing so well. So I think that's why our expectations were high, because we are so close. Now, a lot of people out there may not be completely familiar with volleyball and volleyball positions. Um, 238 kills, so you are potentially our top offensive player, possibly one of the top offensive players in the conference. Listed as an outside hitter on the roster, uh, but I know that you're a bit more versatile than that. Talk about kind of what your position and what your role on the team is. Um, I'm playing outside this year, but in previous years I played middle and right side. So if we're lacking somewhere normally, I maybe will get switched during the game, which is kind of like interesting because then you get different, it's like a different place. Like, I don't know how to explain it. I'm at, for like normally I'm on the left side, for outside, and then sometimes I go to right. So it's different positions, different balls, different sets. And, and, and what, are you, what are you trying to do? 238 kills, it's not always pounding the ball, though. Yeah. When, when you're reading the court, what are you looking for? I'm looking for open spots. I'm not necessarily just going up to swing. I'm going to look and see if they're shallow or they're deep or ask my teammates to call it out for me. And, and Coach, what, what is she offering and what is she providing for the team this year? Again, leading the conference in kills right now. Yeah, Sam just has an amazing approach and snap on the ball. I mean, this week where I'm trying to teach her how to take some power off of her arm and drop the ball to the center of the court, and she's like, I can't do it because she always has so much power. But we work on it, and she is, she is finally getting that shot down, which is great to see. But she, um, because she's so versatile and she was normally a middle growing up, she has a really fast approach and a quick arm swing. So when you put that on an outside attack and you run quick shoots to the outside, you're beating the block, and that's Sam's best hit as a shoot because she's normally used to that quick approach and that quick swing. So that's why she's so di dynamic on the outside. A key SUNYAC weekend coming up. Um, you know, matches at New Paltz. All three matches will be at New Paltz. Uh, Brockport, New Paltz, and Oneana are the opponents. What are you looking for out of this weekend, and, and what are you preparing your team for without giving away our secrets? <laughs> Um, I mean, I'm looking for consistency, and that's a big word that we preached a lot this year as well, consistency in our play. Um, yeah, we went 3-0 and the first weekend. That's awesome, but that weekend's now done. How are we going to figure out how to go 3-0 and this weekend? Um, some people would say New Paltz and us are in the top three 
to host SUNYAC, so New Paltz is going to be a really hard game, but we can't overlook Oneana or Brockport at all. And with how SUNYAC is being laid out this year, with every playing everyone once, we said at any given day, on any night, anyone in SUNYAC can beat one another. So we have to figure out how are we going to beat that team and not underestimate anybody. And I, I want to talk about the format change. Sure. Uh, Divisional play has always been the way in volleyball where we play those teams in the West and those teams in the East play each other and come together at playoff time. For the first time in, in the conference history now, we're, everybody's playing everybody. Yeah. Um, so matches against New Paltz and Oneana this weekend will be conference matches for the first time. Were you a proponent of that switch, and, and how do you feel it, it will work moving forward? Absolutely. I, I preached it even when I first got here as an assistant. I'm like, this is how we run our conference? It seemed a little crazy to me that we don't play everyone once. I mean, last year when we played New Paltz in the semifinals of conference or the tournament, that was the first time I ever played New Paltz, and that was my fourth year coaching at Buffalo State. So I'm like, wow, this is a little weird. It's fantastic. You're really getting to see who the number one team in the, in the conference is, and you get to see rivalries throughout our, our whole conference, not just half of our conference. So I'm really, really pleased with that. The conference changed the way that it did. And I think the girls are too. Yeah, I think yeah. they like From it From a better. player's perspective, do Yeah, you I think it's that? Um, beneficial in, for us. Like we get to see everyone once. So you kind of know what you're expecting when you go to um, playoffs. the playoffs. Right. And Sam, what are your goals the rest of the season, personally and, and team goals? Personally, I just want to keep bettering myself, like learn different shots like she said like we're working really hard this week going early um for the team i think our goal is just to keep playing better than our like our previous self like the game before like you want to be better the second match and like keep going going like never give up be very consistent coach as you look toward the end of the season obviously eyes are on suniac championship and ncaa playoffs but what do we need to do to get to that point Focus on each day as it comes. I tell the girls, let's not dwell on the past and let's not really focus too much on the future. We have to take one day at a time and, you know, we focus on today and what's going to happen today in practice. And, yeah, obviously today in practice we are focusing a little bit. We have to focus on this weekend, but we don't want to look too far down the road because if, you know, we can't play our best volleyball today, we won't be able to play our best volleyball at the end of the season when we should be competing in the playoffs and competing in the NCAAs. We talked about the format change and, and an exciting weekend coming up for us. Not to look past this weekend, of course, <laughs> players. Uh, October 25th and 26th, when we host the final weekend of, of regular right. season play, uh, New Paltz, Oswego, Cortland, and Brockport will all visit the sports arena. Um, how does preparation change when, when we're hosting the event, or does it? I don't think it really will. I oh, mean, I, our mindset should be no different playing at home than they are going and playing at New Paltz because the games are equally important. So... I think that we just kind of, again, we have to stay consistently, consistently with our volleyball, consistently and mentally. So well, the girls are going to get there. Really proud of them this year. They're doing great. Great to have you on the show, and, and good luck this weekend and, and the rest of the season. And hopefully Thank we you. can see more home volleyball into yeah. November. <laughs> uh, that'll do it for this segment. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more volleyball with our senior setter, Kelsey Bayshore, but we're also going to talk about what she's doing off the court that, that is setting her apart from our other student athletes. Welcome back in our final segment today. We're joined by women's volleyball player Kelsey Bayshore, a senior setter, although this segment's not really about volleyball. It's, you are part of the success that we've talked about with, with Coach and Sam, a huge part, the reigning SUNYAC West Player of the Year, second in the SUNYAC right now with 711 assists so far. Congratulations to you as well on a great season to this point. But Thank you. Also the president of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, a fashion and textile technology major, you've been keeping yourself a little bit busy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We had you on last spring and talked about a great internship opportunity that you had lined up for, for this past summer. Uh, tell our viewers, just how did you spend this past summer? Yeah, so I got an internship designing men's apparel for Under Armour. Um, I was placed in the golf department, so I worked alongside the senior golf designer the entire time. And it was an amazing experience. We went through about a week of training just to learn like the Under Armour culture and um, what it's about. and. That was just such a, it was just so amazing to like learn about the company. And then um, I spent 11 weeks there in Baltimore, Maryland, and we did a lot of give back opportunities through Under Armour. We got to meet a lot of the sponsored athletes, and it was just amazing going through the design process there. 
my little plug for Under Armour with my Under Armour yeah. golf shirt on right now. Um, what did you take away from that experience? Just so much experience on the job. I got thrown right into a design position, so I felt more like an employee than an intern, which was good because I'm graduating early, so I need to be prepared for the workforce very quickly. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I got to attend all of the meetings with the senior designer. I got to go to all the fittings. Um, he let me design a quarter zip for Dick's Sporting Goods that's coming out next fall. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it was just learning how things work in the real world. Now you, now you were on last spring talking about the opportunity and the process, and how, it, how it came about, but you said you've learned a little bit more about the process and how many applicants there were. Ex explain to our viewers or remind our viewers, how did this come about? Yeah, so I, um, I needed to do an internship before I graduated, and with volleyball, summer is the only time to do it. Um, and I heard that Under Armour had a great summer league program, um, and I guess there was about 7,000 applicants for all of the intern positions, and there was about 50 hired. Um, so there was only one for design, so I got chosen for the design one, but all of the other interns were different departments at Under Armour. So it was really cool. I got to meet a lot of different people. They came from all over the country. Uh, we got to house together, and it was just a great experience. A great experience for sure, and you mentioned recently discovered that you can graduate this December. Yeah. Um, congratulations, after Thank just seven you. semesters, that's, that's well ahead of the curve. Um, talk a little bit about what kind of opportunities you're looking to pursue following graduation. Yeah, so I um, am still in talks with some people at Under Armour and I'm hoping to end up back in Baltimore as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, there's different departments that I got to network with while I was there. Um, so I'm kind of looking into maybe not staying in golf, maybe staying in golf, not really sure yet. Um, but the outdoor department is amazing there as well, and I also have an interest for hunt and snowboard, so that kind of fits me pretty well. So, yeah, maybe end up back in Baltimore, hopefully. Not a whole lot of snowboarding down in the Baltimore area, no. though. No, so. <laughs> might um, have to come back to New York. <laughs> also president of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, so I'm not quite sure where you're finding time to sleep right now, but <laughs> explain what is the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, first off. Um, it's We basically meet every Tuesday, and... Um, every other Tuesday we have all of the student athletes are invited to attend so we just bring them together and we talk about upcoming events and I'm trying to take a huge role in bringing athletes together this year so I'm taking on doing outside activities um, like we had a kickball tournament just for fun no coaches no staff it was just us athletes together playing kickball so that was a lot of fun and then just trying to be supportive of each other and um, make Bengals supporting Bengals successful which is, I don't know, just make, making sure athletes support each other. And of course, having a kickball game without staff gives you guys a chance to win since, yeah. since we dominate the, the softball yeah. event each year. <laughs> we'll see um, about softball this year. You know, long term with, with Student Athlete Advisory Committee, it, it's changed over the years mm -hmm. here and every president kind of shapes it the way that they see it best serving the student athletes. What would be your goals as kind of a legacy as, as you leave the Student Athlete Advisory Committee to future student athletes? Um, hopefully just making sure that athletes are having fun together. I think that we spend so much time involved in our own sports that we kind of don't really get involved with other teams as much as we should. So I definitely am hoping to like make athletes friends with each other more than in the past and just I don't know, it's, it's supposed to be a fun environment at SAC, so we give like give away t-shirts and candy if they attend and pizza parties and stuff. So just having fun together mostly. And it, and it really has changed the culture of the athletics department over the last 10 years or so. I know when I was a student athlete here, it was very different. And like you said, the hockey team, we hung out with the hockey team. Yeah. And, and it, it's a much more supportive atmosphere now mm -hmm. for our student athletes. How do you find time? How do you, how do you balance, <laughs> balance your time between all your endeavors and focus on you know, a, a volleyball team that's that's in the mix to be perhaps the top team in the conference. Yeah. Um, well, well, congratulations so far again. Sudiac West Player of the Year last year and, and on pace to, to receive some great accomplishments this year as well. Buffalo State's next home match is next Wednesday, October 16th against Nazareth. And it's going to be kind of a special event as Instructional Resources will be teaming up with the Buffalo State Communication Department to broadcast that game kind of as a, as a pilot to to a learning experience for our for our students in the comm department. That game will air uh, on tape delay on Time Warner Sports Channel. Encourage all fans to come out and watch some some great volleyball, some of the best in, in New York State, but also just be part of the atmosphere and, and who knows, find yourself on television. Um, so good luck this weekend. Thank you. Again, big SUNYAC weekend ahead. That'll do it for this edition of Bengal Magazine. Thanks as always to our great staff here in Instructional Resources. We'll be back again in two weeks with more Bengal Magazine.